Let us assume that you lived in the tropics like I do. Then on some days you'll be experiencing some extremely hot conditions. However, if you lived in the north, let's say close to Alaska, there are some days you'll be living under some uncomfortably cold conditions, say below zero degrees. Numbers that are below zero degrees are negative numbers. Now we have set the stage that we can use this experience to explain what integers are. Integers are whole numbers plus negative counting numbers. Or you can describe this as positive or negative counting numbers plus zero. Let us use a diagram to illustrate the meaning. If you had this as a number line, an integer number line, these are your whole numbers. And this is your negative counting numbers. So that you can see along the number continuum, integers are whole numbers and negative counting numbers. Now let us look at the second definition. These are positive counting numbers and these are negative counting numbers and here is zero. Zero is neither positive nor negative. This is what you may call a gray area. We can now see that integers are positive or negative counting numbers plus zero. Now let's put things into perspective. Suppose if you were given this number line, and this number line represents the temperature at any given point in time. Then numbers to the right of any specific number are increasing in temperature. Whereas numbers to the left of any specific number along the same number continuum are decreasing. This means that if you were to select any number, let's say negative 4, and negative 3, then negative 3 would be greater than negative 4. Here are some examples. If you had this number line and you were to compare 4 and 2, then 4 is greater than 2. This is because 4 is to the right of the number 2. And recall, any number to the right of any specific number along the same continuum are greater. If you compare 1 and 0, 1 is greater than 0 because 1 is to the right of 0. Similarly, 0 is greater than negative 2 because 0 is to the right of negative 2. Can you see why negative 2 is greater than negative 4? If you said that negative 2 is to the right of negative 4, you are correct. Let us look at the reverse case. When comparing 2 and 4, 2 is to the left of 4. So we say 2 is less than 4. 0 is less than 1 because 0 is to the left of 1. Can you see why negative 2 is less than 0? Negative 2 is less than 0 because negative 2 is to the left of 0. Negative 4 is also less than negative 2 for the said reason. Got it? Now let us take a closer look at our integer counters. This is your positive integer counter and this is your negative integer counter. When both counters come together like this, it is equal to 0. This is because they nullify each other. Now we need to keep this in mind. Whenever two basic operations come together, in particular plus or minus in any form, then the plus should be treated as the same as and the minus would be treated as the opposite of. Remember, these apply 
for whenever more than one sign appears between two terms. Now let's take a closer look. If I had 5 plus 4, then I would represent this equation with 5 positive integer counters and 4 positive integer counters. When we sum the total amount of integer counters, we would get 9, so that 5 plus 4 equals 9. But suppose if we had this. Here we have more than two of these operations coming together between two terms, the term being 5 and 4. So we treat the plus as the same as whatever is before the 4. What is before the 4? A negative. So what is the same as a negative? Well, a negative is the same as a negative. So to represent this, we would use five positive integer counters and four negative integer counters. This is because we are using the sign that is the same as negative. Now that we have represented it, we group them in pairs like this. And these nullify each other so that we are left with one positive. So that we can say 5 plus negative 4 is equivalent to 1. Let's look at another example. If we had this, clearly we would represent negative 5 with 5 negative integer counters like this. We have positive 4. So we're going to represent this with four positive integer counters like this. Then we group the counters in pairs like this. These nullify each other, leaving me with this. So that we would have negative five plus four would give me negative one. Before we can discuss the subtraction of integers, let's have a few reminders. Whenever a positive and a negative appears between two terms, then the following applies. The plus means the same as, and the minus means the opposite of. Now let's take a look at some problems. If I had 5 minus 4, then this can be executed by putting 5 positive integer counters and four negative integer counters. We can then pair these counters like this. And since they are paired, they nullify each other. So we would have this. So five minus four would be equal to one. Let us look at another example. If I had negative five, minus 4, then we can do this by putting 5 negative counters and 4 more negative counters. They cannot be paired simply because they are not of opposite signs. So we count all the negative counters we have. So altogether we have 9 negative counters. So that we would have negative 5 minus 4 would be equivalent to negative 9. Let's look at this example. Now we have two signs between two terms. The two terms being negative 5 and 4. Remember, minus means the opposite of. So when we have minus negative 4, it means the opposite of negative. And what is the opposite of negative? It's positive. So we can represent this equation by putting 5 negative counters and 4 positive counters. This is because we had the opposite of negative. And the opposite of negative is positive. So we had four positive. We then group the terms 
together like this and these will nullify each other leaving me with this so we see negative 5 minus negative 4 is equivalent to negative 1 let us now turn our attention to multiplication of integers if I had 2 times 3 this means I have two integer counters that are positive occurring three times so that two times three will be the sum total of all these integer tiles and this would be equivalent to six but suppose if I had negative two times three then I will have two negative integer counters like this occurring three times so negative two times three will be the sum total of all these counters this would be equivalent to negative six now recall if I had negative two times three this was equivalent to negative six but what if we wanted to find negative two times negative three Observe, these two are two different problems. The first one we had positive 3 and the second one in red is negative 3. Recall we said when we see negative we can interpret it as the opposite of. So what is the opposite of negative? You are correct, it's positive. So the six tiles that are negative to the top would now become positive tiles and so therefore negative 2 times negative 3 will be equivalent to positive 6. Let us now turn our attention to the division of integers. If I had 6 divided by 2 then this means I should put 6 integer counters that are positive and we are going to now put them in groups of twos like this. We will see that we'd have three groups of twos so that six divided by two would be equal to three. But suppose if we had negative six divided by two, this means I would have six set of negative counters. Now I'm going to divide this in groups of twos like this. I will still have three sets. However, there are three sets of negatives. So that negative six divided by two would give me negative three. Take a look at this. Recall when we had six divided by two, we had three. And this was represented like this. But suppose if we had 6 divided by negative 2. Recall the minus sign negates what you had before. In other words, it's the opposite of what you had before. So if you had positives before, then now you would have negative tiles. That is negative 6 tiles. The division is done in similar manner. How many groups do we have? We have three groups of negative tiles. So 6 divided by negative 2 would be equal to negative 3. Recall that we had 6 divided by negative 2 equal negative 3. But suppose if we had negative 6 divided by negative 2. We can see it's the same idea expressed here with the exception of the 6 is negative in this case. This means we have to also negate the tiles that are above. In the above example we had negative tiles. So the opposite of negative would be positive. And since the quantities are the same, we will have positive six tiles. 
So negative 6 divided by negative 2 is the same as saying positive 6 styles divided by 2. And when we divide this into groups of 2's, we will have this. 3 sets of 2's. But note that these sets are positive and therefore negative 6 divided by negative 2 is equivalent to positive 3. I'll see you in the next video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.